Hi class, I'm going to do a very brief demonstration of how to do a sublimation. But the first thing I want you to know is that I'm wearing proper laboratory attire. I'm wearing goggles, I'm wearing gloves, I've got an apron on, and I'm wearing shoes that cover my feet. So this week, really make sure you wear shoes that cover your feet. You're also not allowed to drink or eat in lab. I've been picking up a lot of coffee cups and water bottles. Okay. At the end of your caffeine isolation process, you will have a solid in a round bottom flask similar to this. However, your solid will be stuck all over the sides of the glass. Okay? This is a loose solid. What you'll have to do is take a spatula and really loosen up that compound and get it to a point where it's laying on the bottom of the flask like this. Okay? The compound then has to be transferred into a suction flask. In your kit, you have a suction flask that looks like this. This is a 125 milliliter suction flask. You will then take the compound, tip it upside down, and just pop it into this flask so that the compound is laying on the bottom. Okay, the next part of your procedure will involve getting a rubber adapter like this one. Okay, placing the rubber adapter in your 125 milliliter suction flask. Then you will get a test tube. This is just a run of the mill test tube from your kit. The test tube needs to have some parafilm wrapped around it so it'll sit properly in the sublimation apparatus. We will give to you parafilm. Everybody loves parafilm. Parafilm is stretchy, sticky, and it seems to have multiple uses in an organic lab, but it actually does not because most organic solvents will dissolve parafilm, so don't take it on as your favorite sealing agent. But in this case, it's useful because we're going to use it to create some more thickness around the test tube so it'll fit properly in the apparatus. So I would take this piece of parafilm, fold it in half, and put it on the test tube about two-thirds of the way up, and then start stretching it and sticking it to the test tube, as I'm doing here. This makes the test tube thicker, okay? When it's thicker, it will be able to sit properly in the black rubber adapter or the neoprene adapter. What you want, ideally, is for the test tube to sit about maybe a centimeter to, you know, about a centimeter from the bottom of the flask where the solid is. Now, this test tube has to be filled with a cooling agent. The cooling agent we use is dry ice. So I'm going to show you how to break up dry ice and put it into the tube. The dry ice will be available in the laboratory. Okay, this is dry ice that's been sitting out for a while. I don't even know if you can see it there. Little chunks. You really shouldn't pick it up the way I am because it will hurt your fingers but I have absolutely no sensation in my hands, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, this is frozen carbon dioxide, okay? Now, what you need to do is wrap it up in some paper toweling, as I'm doing, and then break it, and I'm just going to use the top of a gas tank, into very small pieces. Once this is done, you can put this dry ice into your test tube. So the dry ice has to go into the test tube. Okay, so I will, try, I will attempt to get my dry ice into the test tube. This may be, you could do it manually as I'm doing here, or you could pick up the test tube I mean, pick up the paper and kind of shoot it in, which is probably what I would recommend doing. So in other words, you could take this paper, it's just kind of not the best paper towel, 
but you could take your paper towel and use it like a little chute to put the dry ice into the tube. Okay. Now, now the tube is pretty full of dry ice, and it's going to act as a surface on which the compound can depose. And deposition is when solid forms from the gas phase. So we call it deposition. So this compound is going to go from the solid phase to the gas phase on this tube. And you need a cold surface. It's like a condenser, but we need a really cold surface to collect this caffeine. The first, a really important thing to do before you start is wipe the condensation off the tube. Another important thing is to have the hot plate preheated. We recommend an intermediate setting. This is a brand new hot plate. Now it says it's not working, but it really is working. <laughs> Sometimes people write not working on things. Normally, if your hot plate isn't working, it's because the cord isn't plugged in all the way, and I don't think this one is. Okay, so it's working. On these hot plates, this would mean a setting of about 300. On the older hot plates, it would be a setting of about 5. Caffeine sublimes at 100 degrees. So you get your hot plate heating right off the bat, and then... Right before you're going to start, wipe that condensation off, okay, then place your sample up on the hot plate and let your tube just kind of hang above that solid. What will happen is the solid will begin to sublime. This is a unique property of caffeine and not all, uh, of many organic compounds, but caffeine has this ability at 100 degrees it will go from the solid phase to the gas phase. When the gas phase starts to form, you'll see a lot of smoke in the apparatus, and the compound will actually start to solidify on that extremely cold finger. Um, what we discovered is that it's best when the, when the uh, sublimation is over to not try to get the compound off the finger. This is the finger. The compound will be sticking to the finger. It'll be quite beautiful. Um, we find that it's best to let, to put this apparatus in your locker, let it sit for a couple of days, and let the dry ice just evaporate out of the tube. When you come back, the caffeine should be nice and dry, and you should be able to scrape it off the finger. So, at the end of the day, the compound will be stuck to this finger. The problem with the collection of the compound is that as soon as you take the tube out into the air, water starts to freeze on the tube because dry ice is very low temperature. It's already doing that. Um, you don't want water mixed in with your caffeine. So again, if you keep the tube in your locker, if you just let it sit in the locker, in a couple days the water will be gone and what will be left will be these beautiful crystals of caffeine and what you'll want to do is take your spatula, you'll have a weight, you should have a, a watch glass, take your spatula and scrape those crystals off, get a mass, get a melting point and this will be very, very pure caffeine. What's left behind in the bottom of the flask is chlorophyll. So we usually sublime until there's no white solid left, and the only thing left is some burned up chlorophyll on the bottom. Okay, it's very exciting and fun. It takes about five to ten minutes to do a sublimation as long as you have the temperature set right. And of course, even though I'm putting this video up, we're going to help you with this. Okay, so I'll see you in lab. Bye-bye.